Ethiopia, Africa's ancient kingdom, has been shrouded in mystery since the beginning of recorded history. Ethiopia is located on a high mountainous plateau in northeastern Africa, a region remote from the rest of the world. In ancient times, Ethiopians were continuously at war with plundering bands of invaders, but their willingness to fight turned back all enemies. As a result, the peoples of Ethiopia, who are predominantly Aryan, are free and independent. They are proud of having the longest continuous history of any Christian nation in the world. The major religion is ancient Coptic, the oldest branch of the Christian church. Although a constitutional monarchy divided into 12 provinces, each with its own governor, Ethiopia is essentially a feudal state. Most of the people still live in isolated villages ruled by tribal chiefs. These leaders and warriors are highly respected by their fellow villagers. The chiefs owe their allegiance to his imperial majesty, Haile Selassie I, conquering lion of the tribe of Judah, elect of God, emperor of Ethiopia. Haile Selassie is a prince of the world's oldest continuous line of royalty, and according to legend, is a direct descendant of King Solomon and the Queen of Sheba. The boundaries of modern Ethiopia and Eritrea closely match those of ancient Abyssinia. The country lies in the northeastern corner of Africa. On the northeast is the Red Sea. To the west is the Anglo-Egyptian Sudan. On the south are Kenya and Somalia, and on the east are French and British Somaliland. Ethiopia is a vast country, about nine times the size of New York State. Most of its terrain consists of a high plateau, thousands of feet above sea level. This plateau is broken in many places by deep valleys and steep mountains. The fact that Ethiopia is primarily populated by a people of Caucasian ancestry makes it unique among other African nations. There are over 100 different tribes and races within the country. Although dark in complexion, most of the people are Caucasian and are descended from the ancient Hamites and Semites. Although Amharic is the official language, many dialects are spoken. The lack of a universal language is one reason for Ethiopia's slow development. The Amharas are Christians, members of the ancient Coptic Church. They live in Addis Ababa and other parts of the Central Plateau. Although the Amharas are a minority of the total population, they form the dominant ruling class. Another important group are the Galas, who occupy the southern provinces. These people are mostly Muslims and live in the rural areas. There are also many primitive tribes living in the more remote areas of Ethiopia. The Danakils are an example. These nomads live a harsh life, roaming from place to place in the semi-desert sections. Most of the Ethiopians of today are not pure descendants of any one race. The facial features of both women and men are likely to reflect a varied combination of Caucasian, Negroid, Arabian, and Hebrew characteristics. Life for most Ethiopians has changed little from that led by their ancestors. Most of the people still live in small villages with no direct contact with the outside world. Village life centers around a few scattered huts. Large families live together in these small primitive shelters. These structures are built of mud and straw with a thatched roof and a dirt floor. Each family collects the materials and builds its own hut. The people have little or no money, but are self-sufficient. Each member of the family performs some necessary task. An important daily duty for the women is to bring water from the nearest stream or lake. The water supply may be miles away. 
clothing is washed on a rock in shallow water, a slow and tiresome task. Generally speaking, Ethiopia is not noted for its native crafts and excels in very few. One of the home industries is basket weaving. Another craft taught in the mission schools is embroidery and fine needlework. Silversmithing is practiced by skilled artisans in Addis Ababa and Harar. This ancient art is not taught in any school, but is a family heritage passed from father to son. Ethiopia has been blessed with fertile soil and sufficient rainfall, making possible varied agricultural activities, including cattle raising. The most widely grown food crop is teff, a very fine grain cereal. This forms one of the staples of the Ethiopian diet. Other grain crops include wheat, barley, and corn. The plowing, sowing, and harvesting of crops is carried out in the most primitive manner and with the simplest kind of agricultural implements. An example of this is the wooden plow fashioned by the farmer himself. Coffee of high quality is grown in the province of Kaffa. Its export accounts for a large part of Ethiopia's foreign exchange. The national dress is the white cotton shama. Although some cotton is grown, there is not enough to fill the domestic requirements. A program is underway to increase cotton acreage. A great variety of fruits and vegetables is grown and can be bought at all city and village markets throughout the year. The raising and trading of livestock is very important to the country's economy. Skins and hides are among the chief exports. One of the greatest obstacles to Ethiopian progress is the lack of an adequate transportation system. Before the Italian occupation of 1935, the country had only a few hundred miles of dirt roads, paths, and camel trails. The Italians built about 5,000 miles of new roads, including some well-engineered and paved highways. Most Ethiopians still transport their goods on their heads or on the backs of pack animals. Motor vehicles are increasing in Addis Ababa, Asmara, and other larger towns, but it will be many years before motor cars become a common sight. Lions are still found in some parts of the country. There are many hyenas throughout Ethiopia. Baboons are widely distributed and are in great numbers. In the lagoon-like reaches of the Blue Nile, there are large herds of hippopotami. The forests that line the river Juba along the Sudan frontier are a favorite haunt of the mighty elephant. Ethiopia has never had organized big game hunting. The government is keenly interested in protecting the wild creatures and this vast country may prove to be one of the last sanctuaries for African wildlife. Although some Ethiopians have discarded traditional garments and adopted modern implements, they still reflect the primitive culture which exerts a profound influence on their behavior. Addis Ababa, the capital and chief city, is located on the central plateau at an altitude of over 8,000 feet. Western ideas and products first appear in Addis Ababa. In the business district, Western architecture predominates, but the streets are congested with people, burrows, and carts. The second most important city is Harar, located about 300 miles east of Addis Ababa. 
This gate was built by invading Muslims more than 600 years ago. Harar is still a center of Muslim influence. The city is very old and has accepted only a few of the modern innovations found in Addis Ababa. The population of the city is a mixture of many races, making Harar the melting pot of the nation. Ethiopia has been a Christian kingdom since the first half of the fourth century. There are over 15,000 Christian state churches in the country. One quarter of the male population of the ruling class, the Amharas, are priests. The state religion is Coptic, an ancient form of Christianity. The church has great influence with the people and also in government affairs. Public events, such as this celebration on the anniversary of Haile Selassie's return from exile, are usually of a religious nature. People come from distant villages to take part in the activities and to see and hear the emperor. The army has always played a dominant role in Ethiopian life. Just as many young men are attracted into the priesthood of the Coptic church, many others look forward to serving in the army. This ancient kingdom was an unconquered nation until the Italian invasion in October 1935. Brave as the people were, they could not match the huge modern war machine of Mussolini. Many improvements were introduced by the Italians during their occupation. Well-engineered paved highways soon were built over the mountains in Eritrea from Massawa to Asmara. In addition to roads and bridges, the Italians contributed many other improvements toward the development of Eritrea, now a federated province of Ethiopia. Eritrea borders the Red Sea, and the major seaport is Massawa, one of the hottest places on earth. It's a busy harbor, shipping hides, skins, salt, coffee, tobacco and cotton to world markets. The chief city is Asmara, located on a high plateau. Roman-style architecture and wide streets are some of the constant reminders of the influence of the Italians. Life within the palace of Haile Selassie is in sharp contrast to the simple, humble existence of most Ethiopians. Here one finds splendor comparable to that enjoyed by the kings of the Arabian Nights. The emperor holds many official events in his beautiful gardens. Guests often are entertained at formal dinners served on a banquet table resplendent with fine linen, china, gold and silver. The dinnerware is of finest china decorated with pure gold. The silver service is a priceless collection of heirlooms and gifts from other princes and heads of states. Although Haile Selassie shares his authority with a council of ministers, in reality, the 20 million people of Ethiopia are still ruled by their benevolent emperor. Haile Selassie is a proud and gentle father, interested in his children and grandchildren. Most of his leisure time is spent with them. The emperor not only has a great love for people, but also a deep concern for all living things. His pets and the animals in his private zoo give him much pleasure. One of the prime concerns of government is the education of the people. An extensive school development program is now underway. Whenever possible, the emperor attends public school events, such as this sports competition. He takes a great interest in the younger generation, knowing that their education and training as Ethiopia's future leaders is essential. Haile Selassie established the Ethiopian Airways as one answer to the country's transportation problems. 
However, well-engineered highways and bridges must be constructed in order to connect remote villages and towns. This new bridge, spanning the Blue Nile, is being opened with much ceremony. The Empress usually attends all large ceremonies with her husband. Under the guidance of Haile Selassie, the 225th ruler of this ancient kingdom, Ethiopia is gradually emerging from its isolated and mysterious past into the modern world.